Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Warframe. I think my previous guide was like five years ago, so I'm going to do a brand new one. A lot of stuff changed. You Now you can change the API, you can change also the engine. So we're going to look at this. We're going to start with the optimization of Windows, and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a, a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an, an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for NVIDIA, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So right energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is, sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimizes your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So before launching the game, you will have this uh, game launcher. Click on settings. So you will have the graphic API, as you can see over there. You have two different uh, selections. You can have like the DirectX 11 or 12. I really recommend it to test it out uh, on some new GPU. DirectX 12 will provide you most of the FPS, but sometimes you will have some issue with 
uh, the stabilization of them. So it really depends on what type of video card. If you have like the Series 3000 or even the 2000 Series for an NVIDIA, definitely test the DirectX 12. For AMD 6000 Series and the 5000 Series, you can test the 12. If you have like a, an older video card that date like from uh, four or five years ago, definitely go with DirectX 11. For the graphic engine, we're going to talk about it inside of the game, but I normally I recommend Enhance. And for GPU preference, super important to use the high performance one. When you finish with this, you press OK and you just start your game. So now the graphic parameter. So first of all, uh, the display mode, normally in any game, you should use full screen. If you have some floating issue with your mouse, I recommend to go with borderless full screen. But in my case, honestly, the full, full screen was not a problem. And uh, this is the mode that will provide me the most of my FPS. So that's why I'm using it. For the video resolution, just use your native resolution from your monitor. So if you have like a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have 1080p, go with 1080p. For the refresh rate, super important to look at this. I don't know why, by default, it's never the good amount of Hertz. So depending on your monitor, in my case, it's 170. So just put the amount of Hertz that your monitor have. Aspect ratio, I don't touch it. Vertical sync, I'm putting this one at off. If you have a free sync or a G-Sync monitor, you don't want to use vertical sync. If you don't have those technologies, it's a question of preference. If you don't mind about uh, screen tiering, I recommend to go with vertical sync at off. If you don't like screen tiering, just put your vertical sync at on, but it will add input lag in your game. For the max frame rate, I'm not locking my FPS. I'm locking it with Radiant Chill at 168. I just want to make sure that I'm staying in my free sync range. So this one is, it can be tricky. If you have like, a, for example, a laptop with 60 Hertz uh, my, uh, screen and you can uh, do like 90, 100 FPS in this game, uh, just look at your thermal. Sometimes you will have more FPS, but you will have some trolling on your CPU and GPU and you're starting to get like some random drops and you don't know why. So don't unlock your FPS if you don't have a good thermals and a good cooling solution in your computer. After that, for field of view, field of view, it... Uh, so question of preference, I always play at maximum, but honestly, just change all your graphic parameter first. Look at your FPS and after that, look at your field of view, because if you have uh, if you increase your field of view, you will lose FPS. So super important to don't go too crazy over there. If you're limited, like, I don't know, you're playing on, on a laptop with an integrated GPU, uh, probably the maximum field of view will not fit for your computer. So super important to look at this. Show FPS, I recommend to check it. You will have at bottom left of your screen, the amount of FPS, your frame time, your RAM, and the amount of VRAM that you have. It can help you to monitor when you do change, when you change parameter inside of your graphic uh, settings. For the graphic engine, I recommend to go with Enhance. Uh, your visual will be a lot better. Uh, I recommend also at the end of the guide when you change everything, maybe do some testing between Classic and Enhance. For me, Classic was running better on some computer, very old computer, one of my laptop. But uh, if you have something like four years old and you just want like better visual, just go with Enhance. Geometry quality, I recommend to go with low. You will have a nice 4% boost in your FPS. Shadow quality, if you compare high to low, you can get a nice 12% boost. This one is super important. All those shadow parameters in this game, I recommend to put the, to disable them or to go with low. For texture memory, if you have 4 gig of more and more of VRAM, you can definitely go with high. And I recommend to put your anisotropic at 8. If you have uh, something like 3 gig, go with medium and put your anisotropic at 4. And if you have less than 3 gig, go with low and 2x over there. I will put it back. Particle system quality, I recommend to go with low. Uh, you will not necessarily see a boost of your FPS when you do that. But when you will fighting and a lot of action was what will going on, if you're getting some random drop, it's probably because of your particle system quality. So that's why I recommend to go with low. For the GPU particle quality, this one I recommend to disable it. Uh, if you're playing like on a very old computer and sometimes it and with an integrated graphic, you don't want to do that. Just go with disable. It will help a little bit with performance also because particle in this game uh, tanks a lot your FPS. For anti-aliasing, I recommend to go with disable. Not a huge fan of anti-aliasing in this game. It looks very blurry. TAA is fine because you can add sharpen over there, but it's taking a lot of resources, so I don't recommend it. I recommend to use like some. 
a sharpen tool that you can have on with your Nvidia card or your Radeon. It will help a little bit with visibility. If you don't like uh, aliasing in the game, I recommend to go with FXAA. It's not bad. It's doing the job and your game will not look too blurry. Anistropic, we talk about it. Trin and Air filtering, I recommend to go with Un. And after that, after, for the advance, honestly, I just recommend to uncheck everything. All those dynamic volumetric light will give you a lot of FPS, even the local reflection also. Just this part over there, you will get a nice 8% boost in your FPS. Ambient inclusion, I know a lot of people don't like to disable that because the game will look flat. So it's a question of preference, honestly. Uh, but uh, if you activate it, you will lose 4% of your FPS. For the rest of it, I just recommend to uncheck everything. It will provide another like 2 to 3% boost, but it's more about visibility over there. You don't want to use any motion blur. You don't want the depth of field, also the film grain, the bloom. It's more visibility option, not necessarily more FPS. And for the rest of it, also I recommend to disable uh, weapon elementor and color correction. But uh, those ones can provide you a nice amount of FPS, the contact shadow and the character shadow over there. So disable them. Uh, you can expect a nice 5% boost in your FPS. I don't recommend to use dynamic resolution. You want to stabilize your resolution. You don't want some resolution that will change on the fly. Uh, you want to be like always see the same thing. It's better for your visual, your clarity. So that's why I recommend to go to disable. And uh, the optimized flip model, I recommend to disable it. So this is pretty much it, guys, for the Warframe uh, Pyreader. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.